American Rivers 2023 Most Endangered Rivers list has the Snake River as number four. And that's because this is a, an incredibly important time for Snake River salmon and steelhead. The Snake Basin is really the beating heart of salmon country in the lower 48 states. It's just an incredibly special place. You know, the Snake is a tributary of the Columbia, but really it's an equal part of the Columbia. There are these two massive systems that come together and create the most productive salmon habitat in the lower 48 states. Historically, we're talking somewhere between 10 and 16 million salmon that returned to the Columbia Basin, and the Snake Basin was responsible for half of that production. Today, we're at a fraction of that, that kind of a population with a million fish coming back to the Columbia Basin, and snake, salmon, and steelhead are all listed under the Endangered Species Act. So you have what was once the greatest salmon and steelhead stream or river in the country, and now it's just kind of a shadow of its former self. And a lot of that is because of these four run of river dams between Lewiston, Idaho, and Tri-Cities, Washington. About three to 5% of juvenile fish die just from the top of each dam to the bottom of each dam. When you've got eight dams in your way, that's a lot of mortality just from falling over a dam or going through a turbine. But what we don't talk about it nearly enough is the impacts from the warm water reservoirs that are behind the dams. We spend a lot of time talking about improving fish passage and improving survival through the hydro system, but there's nothing you can do to mitigate turning a free flowing river into a warm water bathtub. There's no engineering, there's no human intervention that can change that. So instead of having a free flowing cold water system, we've dammed these into a series of lakes that sit there and bake in the sun all summer. So you have temperature impacts where the water temperature behind reservoirs, oftentimes from July throughout the rest of the summer, exceeds 70 degrees, which can be lethal for juvenile salmon and for adult salmon. And you also created an environment that's much more hospitable to predators that like to eat juvenile salmon, walleye and bass. And you also have avian predators, cormorants and osprey and eagles and sublethal effects from swimming through lakes instead of getting flushed out of a river as they naturally would. The biggest dial we have to turn is removing the lower poor snake river dams. It will have the largest impact that we have control over in recovering the salmon and steelhead. We can't do that without replacing the services the dams provide first. So any sort of a regional solution for salmon recovery in the Pacific Northwest relies on federal leadership and the leadership of our elected leaders in Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana to come together and provide a vision for the Northwest that recovers fish species, but also keeps the industries that rely on the services these lower snake river dams provide whole. Governor Inslee and Senator Murray made that clear in their recent report that came out late last year. And so that's what American Rivers is working towards is finding pragmatic solutions, hosting solutions-based conversations with stakeholders to identify what those needs are so that we can replace the services, take out the dams, so that we can recover salmon and steelhead species and these communities can live in harmony with rather than in opposition to salmon and steelhead and the folks that value those fish species for their way of life. There's more support from elected leaders, from members of the public, and from impacted industries than we've ever seen before. There's a sense of momentum and inevitability around dam removal that's making this an issue that people have to engage in. So we're really looking for folks to come together to find solutions, to solve problems for salmon and steelhead, and for the rural communities that rely on the Snake River dams, so that we have a holistic solution rather than someone from out of the region making decisions. Now is the time for action on the Snake River. We have a very limited window before these species start waking out in the Snake Basin. If we wait, we will miss the opportunity not only for federal funding, but we'll also miss the opportunity to preserve species before they're no longer here.